you know, at the time, I thought that the the, the weakness to be exploited in Tamden's game was, uh, you know, was his grappling. He, he'd had a couple submission losses, and I just never had anybody be able to keep up with my pace of grappling. And so that first round, I, you know, I went out there and put the pedal to the metal, and he was very relaxed and um, stayed calm, and, um, and and he played a great game. You know, and and you know, get, get got the got the submission the last minute of the fight. So comes out and gets starched with the overhand left in his next fight, and I'm like. <laughs> Dude, it was it was tough to watch, man. It was tough because to, you you root for the people you fight, uh, you know, because you know you want those guys to, to gain the ranks and it makes you look better. And so, um, but you know, going into this fight, I'm sticking to what I know, just keeping keeping it exciting, um, and that's always that's always been my mo is being an entertaining fighter, and then the results come all the time, you know. So it's like I was I was in front of my hometown, uh, home crowd in Florida. I was so worried about getting the win, and um, I just needed. To go back to doing what I do best. So you feel like you got you kind of got out of that mentality in that moment, adjusted too much to him. Yeah, I think I did adjust too much, and so it's like you know, the, you, you can't go back and criticize yourself too much because um, had I utilized that game plan against anybody except for Tim, then I still think it would have worked, but it just didn't work that day. So uh, you know, water under the bridge. I'm, I don't beat myself up too much about it. Seven months to get back. It was kind of surprised. Um, was there anything going on, or did, is, I mean, sometimes the UFC is just slow to book. Why, why did it take so long to no, get back? No, the UFC actually offered me fights. I just had other things going on, and um, I was in Italy hanging out with you guys and uh, helping Luke Barnett with his fight, and uh, you know, just living life, man. And so I, I've told the UFC several times I'd like to fight twice a year: one summer fight, one winter fight. Um, and that, that 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 keeps me hungry, keeps me motivated, and uh, I, I know. The, the schedule that my internal drive works best on, and that's that's it. Twice a year is good for me. It's interesting because we always hear fighters talk. You know, the fighter pay is always a big discussion. It seems to me that you know, in order to get paid, you got to fight as frequently as possible. But you feel like that's that's bad for you. If you're in the sport and you're relying on fighter pay to live, you're making a huge mistake. That is not a viable career. This is not a career that people can live off and let alone support families, you know. I mean, I I mean I'm just supporting myself and I couldn't live off, you know, fighter pay alone even if I was, you know, fighting 3-4 times a year. Um uh, you know, I, I, you got you got to do other things. You got to diversify, and so this is this is not something I just do in my off time. It's not a part time job, but it's just one aspect of my life, and I don't rely on it wholly. It's interesting because uh, you know we hear that it, it takes dedication. It's twenty four seven. You got to do it. I remember, you know, any anytime you hear somebody has a full time job, people go, "Oh, that's crazy. That's insane." But you're saying that balance is is maybe healthy. Balance is healthy, but it, you know, it's it's my life still revolves around mixed martial arts. You know, I have my own promotion in Florida. Um, we do. A, we've, we're on show number 62, and so in that sense, um, you know, I, I see every gambit of everything. You know, I, I've, 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 we've had over six or seven hundred fights, so I've seen it all before. All the all the posturing at weighings, all the everything in every single fight. You know, I've, I've seen it all firsthand. Um, and then when I'm not doing that, I'm on the floor, forums or blogs or, or typing away maybe on the websites. You know, so everything I do is still pretty much MMA related. Uh, my competition is just one aspect of that life. It's interesting. Do you think that it should change? Should it be different than that? Because you're saying you just can't do this as a career. It's not. I mean, we, do, is it possible? Could that ever change? Are there things that could be done that fighters can be full-time athletes? Or do you just think that this sport and this business isn't built that it's way? It's not just fighting. It's all at, you know, all sports in general, all sp- pro sports in general. I think a lot of times um, growing up, you know, we get sold this dream that all of us are going to make it and all of us are going to, you know, get to the highest level and uh, all we need to do is work hard and yada, yada, yada. But it takes a lot more than hard work. It certainly takes hard work. But, uh, you, you know, there's other intangibles as well that, that you know, that you can't control and, and, um, and that's what I try to tell the younger guys coming up in the sport is, you know, you can do this. You, the, the experience is great, but, you know, don't don't assume that you're going to be able to make a career off of it. Don't assume you're going to be the next GSP or the next Conor McGregor. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's not for everybody. And, and it's, a, you know, such a tiny, tiny percentage of us actually make it to the UFC. So for me, it's just foolish to, 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 to bank on one thing, especially one as hard to uh, as hard to, to hold on to as this. So with that in mind, do you have aspirations to be a GSP, a Conor McGregor, a champion, or is it more just have fun and get what you can out of it? Yeah, for me, I take it one fight at a time. And so, you know, never in my career, I don't think you could go back and look at one interview where, you, where you, you'll where hear me say, I'm going to be champion of the world. You know, I, 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 I try to keep a cool head and realistic. And that doesn't mean that I don't have positive expectancy about my fights. It doesn't mean that I'm going into any fight thinking that I'm going to do anything but win. But it's like, uh, it's like I, uh, you know, 
I'm, I'm here to entertain, I'm here to have fun, I'm here to increase my, my profile in the MMA uh, world, you know, it's just like I, I have a, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, goals and aspirations, but they're not different, you know, they're not the same as, as all the other fighters, and so um, there, there are fighters or coaches maybe who may hear that and say that's the wrong mentality, but, um, you know, I've, I've, sp I've spoken actually with a mental coach for this fight, and then we, we've talked about that, and he said that's, you know, that's amazing. Take pride in your own goals and asp aspirations because those are, there's a unique to you, and, um, and, and, you know, that's part of your personality, and, and it is, and so, you know, I've learned to embrace that. Very cool. Let's talk about this fight, Tim Boach. Uh, a dangerous guy, obviously uh, been around for a little bit. What, what do you think about the matchup? I like the matchup a lot, man. I'm not going to lie. You know, Tim is, a, is obviously a dangerous guy. He's got a whole boatload of knockouts, but, um, you know, th those were years ago. He's, you know, I just think I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more dangerous. Like, I think I have more tools, and it sounds kind of like a cliched answer, but, I mean, when you go and you look objectively at it, he's got an overhand right, he's got a nice left hook, and he's got a double leg. And so, uh, been preparing for those things all camp. Unless he comes out with something crazy, then then, I, then I'm, I'm prepared for, for anything he has to throw. Different mentality. You just come in, and I mean, this is just two dudes meet in the middle because that's what it kind of looks like to me. I mean, a, a younger, athletic version. He's a he's a big, strong guy as well. I mean, is it is it just put on a show? Put on a show, man. Yeah, that's what the fans are gonna get. So we're in beautiful South Dakota here in Sioux Falls. I know you guys are loving it. So uh, you know, I think it's gonna be a, a, a big crowd on Wednesday night, and, and I'll give them what they want. I haven't read the book yet. I'm looking forward to, to checking it out. I know you got a copy here. So uh, how, how's the book doing? And, and you know, what's that experience been like for you being a published author? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy, man. There are, you know, thousands of copies floating around the world on Kindle and paperback, and so uh, to me, it's it's hard to wrap my my head around. And like, I, I don't know, man. It's it's still it's still uh, it's still a process. It's still you know, it's, it just came out a few months ago. So you know, I I, I the most gratifying part is just hearing uh, from folks who have read it, and like when someone messages me and said. Uh, you know, I've, I've read it from cover to cover. I read it in 24 hours. That, that to me is like, yes, like mission accomplished. Like I, 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 I did what I set out to do. Uh, and then you have folks, you know, just telling me how it touched them in different ways and then helped them out in uh, various, you know, various aspects of their life. So it's awesome, man. It's, it's, it's hard to put into words. So that's cool. You're kind of a renaissance man. Is being a published author, do you think, is that something you want to continue doing? Do you think you'll write something else? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll keep writing for the websites and stuff. I don't know if I'll undertake another book anytime soon. It was a pretty uh, arduous process, and it, you know, it took a few years. So maybe sometime down the line, when I feel compelled again, and I find a topic that uh, that that uh, warrants a hundred thousand words, but uh, nothing anytime soon. Not in the not in the book department.